Coming up on today's show, we have a major Clay Thompson injury update, and it's really good news for this basketball team. But first, we're less than 200 subscribers away from 24,000. If we get there on this video alone, I'm going to chug a beer on the next Warriors today. So without further ado, let's get it. What's up, Dub Nation? Welcome into Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Coming up on today's show, a major Clay Thompson injury update as he continues to progress coming off that torn Achilles and torn ACL. My man hasn't played basketball in 30 months. It has been way too long since we saw Clay Thompson, one of the best shooters and defenders all time in the course of NBA history, on the floor in a Warriors uniform. Has missed the last two years with that aforementioned torn ACL and torn Achilles that happen first in the NBA Finals back in 2019, then on NBA Draft Night back in 2020. Hasn't played a game in about two and a half years, but according to some reports, Klay Thompson is opening up eyes with his rehab, and people around the NBA are starting to take notice. Now, last week here on the channel, we did talk about him warming up pregame in full uniform, and I thought he looked really good coming off that torn Achilles. He was making some cuts, draining some threes, and the biggest indication that I knew that Clay Thompson was feeling pretty good. He basically just stood like this, rose up, and dunked the basketball. That tells me that his lower extremities are feeling very good. Now, where does this report come from? Brian Winhorst of ESPN, who was on the air and relayed this report, which I am so, so excited about because this Warriors team right now is playing glorious, beautiful, gorgeous basketball without the services of Klay Thompson. Imagine how good they're going to be with him on the floor. Winhorst saying this, the whispers going around the league right now about Klay Thompson People are watching him. People are talking to people in the Warriors organization. They say he looks good. Now, I'm not saying he's coming back. He's going to be scoring 40 points in the first quarter, but he looks good working out, and there is a real confidence in there that especially by the end of the season that Klay Thompson is going to be back-back. We're not only talking about Klay Thompson physically being back. Windhorst is indicating that he is going to be back back like the prime Clay Thompson. This is phenomenal news for both Clay as well as the Golden State Warriors organization. You don't become a professional athlete unless you pour everything into your craft. It takes an insane amount of work and a great work ethic to become a one percenter one of the best at what you do in your respective workforces. Just think about it. I love my job. A lot of you out there love your jobs. If you are taken away from your job for 30 months and you are unable to work for that long, human nature tells you that you will be going crazy. And I can't imagine, given the insane competitor that Clay Thompson is, how crazy he's been going and the difficult times that he's had to go through throughout this recovery. He has admitted yeah, I've been through some mental health struggles because I haven't been able to be back on the floor. And as soon as I thought I was going to be back on the floor coming off that torn ACL, what happens? He suffers one of the worst injuries, probably the worst injury that any pro athlete can suffer that torn Achilles. So for the Warriors and Clay, this is great news. And you watch this basketball team this year. I've said it here on air. They remind me a lot of that Warriors dynasty. They're playing a free-flowing style of basketball. The ball movement is there. There are off-ball cutters who are rising up to, to throw down some alley-oops on some back screens. Steph Curry the other night is dropping 50 points. The depth of this team is the best that it's been in a couple of years. This is a squad that's humming without Clay. Imagine how good they could be if Clay is back-back, like Brian Winhorst is talking about. So if you're pumped up, about the return of Clay Thompson, which is probably going to come over the course of the next month or two. Hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. I want to see Dub Nation showing out because I know all of you are pumped to see Clay back on the floor. Now, if Clay returns to that prime form like he was at from 2014 to 2019 when this team made it to five consecutive NBA finals and won three NBA championships. He's going to be back to all-star form, and this team, which is already atop the Western Conference standings with the best record across the entire NBA, is, is going to become a lethal force. During that span from 2014 to 2019, Klay Thompson really solidified himself as 
one of the best shooters of all time, but also one of the best two-way players during that stretch because he was locking down opposing teams' number one players, the Kevin Durant's of the world, when he wasn't playing with the dubs, as well as LeBron James, the list goes on. 21 and a half points per game, 47% from the floor. He shot more than 42% from distance, which is better than Steph Curry, and he shot almost 86% from the line. Klay Thompson did speak recently about him making his return coming off the consecutive injuries, and he was brutal honest and that's how he's always been quote I really miss the winning I miss playing in front of the fans and then just playing basketball I really love what I do I always have since I was a kid I think these last two years has have given me a great sense of appreciation for the work it takes to be great and my story is still being written so I'm not satisfied with where my career is at I still have many more chapters to write and there are going to be more chapters written by Clay if he's able to just be the semblance of himself. I'm not even asking for him to be back back. I'm just hoping that Clay Thompson is able to be close to what he was from those numbers we just popped up. We're talking about an all-time great here in Clay, who goes down as one of the best shooters of all time and an elite defender. A guy who alongside Steph Curry change the way that the NBA game is played. You play pickup anywhere in the world right now, cats are pulling up from 25, 30 feet, and they're shooting a lot of three-pointers. Why is that? The influence and the impact of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. The Splash Bros, they have their fingerprints written all over NBA history. So coming up here on today's show, I'm going to break down what I think should be the Warriors starting five once Clay does come back. But before we get there, you get into the comment section right now and let me know the starting five you think the Warriors and Steve Kerr should trot out there. Today's show is presented to you by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Sports gambling is becoming very, very popular, and it's not hard to be responsible with it. I'm responsible, and I bet all the time. Chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code CHAT125. You can see what I'm talking about, and also get a 125% deposit bonus. So you put in $100, and by using that link in that promo code, you get another $125 back. That's $225 to game with. Now, I know we have people watching from other countries. Our international audience is great and profound here on Warriors today. So let me simplify some of these betting odds. For instance, Draymond Green right now is at plus 2,000 odds to win Defensive Player of the Year. He's been a first-team all-defender throughout his career and is one of the best defenders in the league, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that he wins this award. So at plus 2,000 odds, if you put down $5 for Draymond Green to win Defensive Player of the Year and he actually wins it, the payout $100. Chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code at chat125. Here is my starting five once Klay Thompson comes back, and I had some fun with this. I think Steve Kerb is going to have a lot of lineup versatility at his disposal, and I think that he can go with a small ball lineup depending on the matchup on a night-in, night-out basis. I take Kavon Looney out of the starting five, and because of how well Jordan Poole has been playing, averaging more than 18 points per game, I don't want to see him go to the bench. I don't want to see Andrew Wiggins, because he's a very good defender, go to the bench either. So how how about this starting five? I think it could work. I think it could translate to exciting and winning basketball. Steph Curry at the one, Jordan Poole at the two, Klay Thompson kind of a hybrid. He can play the wing. Then you have Andrew Wiggins at the four and Draymond Green at the five. I'm kind of past worrying about what specific quote-unquote positions players play. I think this is a pretty solid lineup, and I'm not worried about the exact positions. This lineup right here is dangerous. Then you still have a really deep bench because Bob Myers has done a terrific job with assembling this basketball team. James Wiseman, once he comes back. Kevon Looney, that's your front court. Andre Iguodala. Gary Payton II, Damian Lee, all three of those guys have been playing very, very well in the early part of the season. Then after that, you have five more guys that you can trot out. We're talking about a squad here that can be 15 deep any given night. That's crazy. Yeah, did I say that Bob Myers did a good job assembling this team? He sure damn did. Nemanja Bialica, Juan Toscano Anderson, Otto Porter Jr., and then the two rookies, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. You know what that is right there? That is depth. 
That is lineup versatility. If you go up against a team where you need to play a traditional center, that's cool. Jordan Poole is our sixth man that night. Kavon Looney goes back into the starting lineup. Steve Kerr going to have a lot of options and a lot of fun with what he can do with this roster. Going back to what Steph did on, what was it? Monday night against the Atlanta Hawks. I work so much, I just lose track of the days. I'm just worried about pumping out content here because I'm a content daddy. Steph Curry the other night against Atlanta. 35 minutes, a wonderful display of offensive basketball. He went off. A 50-piece nugget, 14-28 from the deck, 13-13, a perfect line at the free throw stripe, and 10 assists. And I thought what Steve Kerr had to say in a radio appearance after what Steph Curry did was awesome. Steve Kerr saying this about the competitor that Steph Curry is. Quote, when I, stay, uh, when I say Steph is competitive on a lot of different levels, this is kind of what I mean. He finds ways to motivate himself, and it's not fake. It's real. He wants to win a championship. He wants to beat the best teams. He wants to let other players in the league know he still got it. He's going to take on the challenge, whether it's LeBron James or one of the best players in the league or a young guy like Trey Young who is up and coming and maybe following in Steph's footsteps, which, yeah, Trey Young really is. He continued on by saying all that stuff factors in and is one of the reasons he is as great as he is. It goes so, so far beyond the skill. It's the competitive desire and the belief in himself that he can follow through on that competitiveness. That's great with what Steve Kerr had to say. To be great, you simply have to be built different. You think that Steve Jobs takes Apple to the levels that Apple was and is at if he doesn't have a tireless work ethic? Do you think Michael Jordan becomes the GOAT if he doesn't pour everything into the game of basketball? Do you think Steph Curry solely changes how the way the game of basketball is played if he doesn't put countless hours in, in, in at the gym? And going back to his high school days, my man is doubted. He's labeled like a one or two star. He has to go to Davidson, can't land any scholarship at a big name college basketball program, goes to Davidson, leads them on an unbelievable and memorable tourney run, then is overlooked when it comes time for the NBA draft, gets selected by Golden State, and ends up being one of the greatest players ever. The lesson here, to be great, you have to be built different, and Steph Curry, no doubt, is built different. Once again, make sure you subscribe to Warriors Today by Chat Sports. We're closing in on 24,000 subscribers. Shout out to Rick Barry, who used to don the 24 for the Warriors back in the day. Nobody's doing what we're doing here. We're not Big J journalist stiffs. We're not beat boys or blog boys. We bring it to you real, unfiltered, uncut, and hey, we just keep it a buck. So hit that red subscribe button down below, and thanks for watching today's show.